Well, I understand that there wasn't, I think the terminology, there wasn't significant impact. Was there any impact, though? Is it possible it didn't sway the entire election, but it may have swung some ridings? No, that there is any interference in our democracies and our democratic processes is a very serious thing. Um, so the protocol is strictly with regards to foreign interference. This is something that Canadians expect and it's something that we will do and do continue we, to do. Do we have the mechanisms and the laws in place to really deal with this? Or um, do we need new laws? Is your government working on new legislation? Um, yes. We, do we have the mechanisms and the laws in place to really deal with this? Yes. We, you know, CSE does not look at Canadians. Um, and so it would only really be with it specifically with regards to foreign interference. Um, Can I ask you if you've seen anything in our reporting that is that is wrong? Are we getting things wrong? Protecting the public from the threat of foreign interference is precisely what Canadians have mandated our government to do. These alleged so-called Chinese police stations, Mr. Speaker. About the level of interference because we have Information from CSIS investigations that the interference in Canada allegedly involved payments through intermediaries to a clandestine network. There could also be cases where a foreign actor is using a domestic actor um, to get their message across. That included candidates affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party, that China was placing agents inside the offices of MPs. The committee believes there is ample evidence that Canada is the target of significant and sustained foreign interference activities and sustained foreign interference activities. Um, what I would, and, and people will understand that I have to be very deliberate when I talk about issues around national security and things that we know to not compromise operations or compromise operations. Or the Act can only be invoked if there's no other law in Canada that can deal with the situation at hand. Now, it appears that there was a military surveillance that was conducted during the Ottawa protest. I find that very interesting, as do many Canadians, because either the government authorized this flyover, this military surveillance, without lawful authority, or, or they utilized another law in Canada, namely the National Defense Act, and therefore the Emergencies Act wasn't required. So which is it? Did the government conduct military surveillance illegally, or did they invoke the Emergencies Act illegitimately? Hey. One of the big events of 2022 was your decision to invoke the Emergencies Act in February. How confident are you that the inquiry into the use of the Act will agree that it was justified? Um, I know that as a government, we took this decision incredibly seriously, incredibly seriously. After Lametti's earlier examination, but he was taken to some text messages that he exchanged uh, with you earlier today. Did you have a chance to see that? Uh, I did not see it. I, I heard Minister Lametti's voice in the background that there was a TV. I heard the, my, I heard my name mentioned, but I was trying to prepare for these questions. Right. Uh, and, and the exchange goes on to talk, uh, you say, and the CAF, if necessary, Mr. Mendicino writes, how many tanks are you asking for? I just want to ask Anita how many we've got on hand. You respond, I reckon one will do. Um, on February 2nd, or at any other point, were you seriously suggesting uh, that CAF be brought in or that um, there be tanks uh, brought in to Ottawa to deal with the situation? No. This, this this exchange uh, is meant to be a joke between two friends, to be a joke between two friends. And uh, Minister Lametti earlier on in testimony to this commission wrote the exchange off as a joke between friends. Do you think this is a joke? Trying to prepare for these questions. Right, uh, and, and... We didn't go into it lightly. We made sure that we move forward with time-limited, uh, targeted, uh, targeted. And I want to thank you, first of all, for really zeroing in on the preloaded stimulus idea. None of us have a crystal ball that some Canadian households, and it tends to be the better off households, do have quite a lot of money. And I want to make an offer now to all of your listeners. If people have ideas on how the government can act to help unlock that preloaded stimulus, 
I am very, very interested. Maybe as Doug Porter was suggesting, it happens by itself. That's the best case scenario for me. Federal government institutions will have a new broad authority to share relevant information with banks and other financial service providers to ensure that we can all work together to put a stop to the funding of these illegal blockades. It happens by itself. That's the best case scenario for me. How confident are you that the inquiry into the use of the act will agree that it was justified? I understand your evidence that for the purpose of the Emergencies Act, we are dealing with a different context, yes? Yes. A different purpose? Yes. And we're dealing with a different decision maker, correct? But I would put to you that when invoking the Emergencies Act, that threshold, the level of threshold of the, of the security threat that must be met cannot be any lower than it is when CSIS is proposing to surveil one person, that the threshold is no different. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. That the threshold is no different. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. I want Canadians to pay very careful attention to this exchange. What the member opposite just engaged in is dangerously close to misinformation and disinformation designed to gin up fears and, uh, and conspiracy theories uh, around uh, what happened uh, a number of months ago. It is entirely irresponsible for members of Her Majesty's loyal in, uh, opposition to uh, to stray so close to misinformation and disinformation. I would ask them to be more responsible.